Great to have you back on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back a little bit in history, uh, the 2nd of September. I'm going back to the year 1968. Um, the incident I'm sharing with you today lasted between September 2nd, 1968 to the 15th of October, also in 1968. It was called the OAU invasion and um, it you know, eventually led to the loss of about 25,000 lives on both sides the Nigerian military side and, of course, the Biafran side. It was 12 days, basically, of house-to-house uh, -house fire when the Nigerian military tried to invade what is today called southeastern Nigeria and take charge of certain cities. Um, it was 12 days, you know, like I said, of, of continued bombardment, and um, uh, Biafran soldiers eventually surrendered on the 14th of September um, after this started today. Uh, it was, of course, carried out by the Nigerian 3rd Marine Commando Division, and uh, that was against the Biafran 12th Division. Biafran soldiers were able to retain control of Omwahia and eventually, you know, take back Oweri and Abba um, in all of this, uh, you know, that happened. Um, you know, but eventually then, you know, um, um, lost the city and, uh, you know, um, surrendered a few months later. Um, in the months, you know, after today's, um, you know, events, they also, you know, tried every now and then to attack the Nigerian army, uh, Nigerian military side, you know, to try and get back some of these cities, but sometimes, you know, um, weren't successful because they were greatly outnumbered. Um, there was also, of course, the parts where uh, there was already the food blockade, to, you know, to parts of uh, the Biafran side, and so it made it difficult to also, you know, carry out a war and um, win the war. But, you know, this day was the day that the Operation OAU began during the Nigerian Civil War, September mm. 2nd, 1968. And um, 15 January 1970, the war officially ended after 30 months of fighting. Over a million people died during that Nigerian Civil War. A very grim time in our history, but I thank God that's uh, behind us now. Absolutely. 2013, on this thing history, September the 2nd, um, history was made. A woman known as Diane, Diane Niad, she was 64 years old. She made a record-breaking swim from Cuba to Florida. She had tried four times, and people had been trying to swim and break that record from Cuba to Florida since the year 1950. She had tried four times, she failed, and she said she was, you know, she obviously went into retirement, but came back later to say, I'm going to try again. So for the fifth time, she stood overlooking those, you know, Cuban waters, and she decided to dare. She worked with a team of experts, scientists, and for the first time, she went without a shark tank because the water from Cuba to Florida was filled with sharks and jellyfishes that actually bit her so bad she had to abandon the swimming expedition um, one of the times in the past. But in this day in history, she became the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida without the use of a, a shark cage for protection. It was a 110 mile swim and it happened in approximately 53 hours. Imagine swimming for 53 hours and she said all the time what you know, helped her through was she just saying she could do it, she could do it, she could do it, telling herself that she could do it and humming her favorite songs in her head, wearing a bodysuit, gloves, you know, wearing booties, wearing a special mask to protect her from jellyfish. She braved the seas and broke that record at the age of 64. It is, it is a mind-blowing record, um, you know, mostly because of her age. And um, another thing, you know, it really tells is that it, once you put your mind to something, there's absolutely nothing that a human, you know, a human being cannot, you know, achieve or cannot do. Um, once you're able to create that, you know, personality in your head and you're able to put your mind to it, you will be able to do it. But something else that this, you know, that is interesting about this is um, one of the things that I've always pointed out, and this is also from the Olympics, when you see certain, you know, people who have won um, gold medals or won medals at the Olympics, even from Tokyo, is the, the thing that makes people want to emigrate to certain places, to the United States, is because the society gives you um, a place where you can achieve being a professor and at the same time be a, an Olympian. You can be a teacher in a school and at the same time be a gymnast, you know, and win records in the Olympics. That's what the society gives you. Um, but here in Nigeria, there's a lot of great swimmers in the Niger Delta that would not dare, you know, things like that. They don't even remember that there's a possibility of breaking records, you know, swimming through the creeks in the Niger Delta. 
That's the difference so, in both societies. Yes, information is power. So once you're exposed to possibilities, knowing that people, there are people who have done these things and they can see that it's possible, you know, then definitely. Yeah, but then also living in an environment that gives you the, the, the space to be who you want to be and, and, you know, live the life to your fullest. That, that's really what it is. Mm. It, it, we don't have a lot of that here. We, we're just trying to get food and get paid at the end of the month and, you know, feed our families. Anyway. Well, Diane Anyad broke that record on this day in history, 2013. Absolutely.